Hello friends, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be starting another reading vlog that is going to be reading your thriller recommendations. If you missed it last month, I recently asked in a YouTube community post for any of your thriller recommendations and this is a video that I have done before. I will link the previous time down below, but this is one of my favorite reading vlogs to make once a year because I love getting thriller recommendations from you because I feel like you guys have a good understanding of what I like in thrillers and so usually I can find some new favorites by doing videos like this. And so I'm so excited to tell you all about the books that you recommended me and to get into the reading vlog, but before we do jump into it, I wanted to say a huge thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. If you have a packed schedule this fall, HelloFresh has you covered with a weekly selection of over 30 recipes that can be delivered right to your door. I love that their plans are flexible and you can change your delivery day, you can change your meal preferences all within the app. And you might not know this, but HelloFresh isn't just for dinners. You can also shop HelloFresh Market for quick breakfasts, little snacks, and even desserts. HelloFresh offers veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals to help make it easy to stick to your food goals. And HelloFresh is the first carbon neutral meal kit company and almost all of their packaging is recyclable. I just love HelloFresh because they make it so easy for someone like me who is not a professional chef to make me feel like I am sometimes. You know like their recipes make me feel fancy even without trying that hard. And most recently me and my sister just made these caramelized onion Swiss burgers the other night and oh my gosh these were fantastic. They were so easy to make like so much easier than I thought. I feel like their their meals are always a lot easier to make than I anticipate that they will be but oh my gosh the freaking caramel onions with the Swiss cheese on this was actually life-changing like so freaking good I know I say this time and time again but I feel like HelloFresh just knows how to make a good burger like their burgers are just superior in every way I have honestly yet to find a HelloFresh meal that I've made that I didn't like like every single meal I've made from HelloFresh I love it go to hellofresh.com and use my code Gabby reads 65 for 65 percent off your order and free shipping and once again, that is HelloFresh.com. Use my code GabbyReads65 and get 65% off your order and free shipping. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into the books. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to be reading a few books. And when I asked for recommendations on my YouTube post, I also did ask for recommendations in an Instagram story with like a little question box just to see if there was any crossover. And there definitely was quite a bit of crossover. The first book that I'm going to be reading for this video that was probably the most recommended thriller to me out of anything is Look Closer by David Ellis. This is one that I had recommended to me on YouTube a few times. I noticed it in three different YouTube comments, including my friend Matt, who we usually have pretty similar tastes in thrillers, so that was promising. And then I also had even more people recommend this to me on Instagram. I had four different people recommend this to me on Instagram, so I was like, okay, wow, this is a sure sign that I need to include this book in this video. And this is a domestic thriller. It's actually kind of a thicker one, to be honest. This one's closer to like 450 pages. And I didn't really know anything about this book before jumping into it other than that we're following this couple named Simon and Vicky who's a wealthy Chicago couple and they're in a very unexciting marriage. And then the story takes off when they find a beautiful socialite hanging in a mansion in a nearby suburb and then all of these secrets begin to spiral out about their marriage. So very excited to read this one. I've actually never even heard of this one before doing this video so that's really cool. The second book that I'm going to be reading for this video is Pretty as a Picture by Elizabeth Little. This is another thriller that I've actually never forgotten heard of before doing this video but but this book was actually only recommended to me in one comment on my YouTube post but it had four thumbs up on it and honestly Kimberly Reads totally sold me on this because she said pretty as a picture highly underrated seems like people either love it or hate it very quick short read following a film editor and someone in the film she's working on dies in a way similar to a previous death on the island where they are filming and honestly like hearing that description from Kimberly I was like okay so we're following a film editor we're following like a movie crew and where it's like an island vibes and there's murder like sign me the fuck up like after reading the book a runtime I am eager and wanting to seek out thrillers that follow like on film sets I think that's really unique and really fun so I just immediately bought this book added it to my TBR for this video because I was like that sounds amazing the next book I'm going to be reading for this video is The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry and I'm so excited to finally be getting to this one because I feel like this one has been recommended to me so much throughout the years like I feel like I've just been hearing 
hearing about this book a lot and people saying because I enjoy the push so much, they really think I would like this one. This one was recommended in a YouTube comment that had 30 thumbs up. And then it was also recommended a few times by some trustworthy friends on Instagram, like my girl Isabel. I always trust her thriller recs and she recommended this one. So this is one that I'm very excited about. And apparently it is similar to the push, at least in the sense that we're following a family and a demonic child who is probably gonna be very dangerous and harmful, I imagine. <laughs> and then the next thriller that I'm gonna be reading for this video is another one that I've never even heard of before doing this video, and that is The Housemaid. And this is one that I got recommended a number of times on the YouTube community post. I had this one recommended three different times, and then I also did have a recommendation on this from Instagram as well. And this one just sounds really interesting and like it could be something I would really enjoy because we're following this woman who's going to be a housemaid for this, you know, family. She's gonna be like moving into the home and there's all these like dark secrets about her and the family. You know, I love any kind of book like this where there's like either like a nanny situation or somebody that like moves into the home that's gonna be working for a rich couple or family. I really, really do love that trope. And so just hearing the premise, I was like, oh, okay, like sign me up. I've never heard of this, but let's do it. And then the last book that I'm going to be reading for this video is actually a manga because it's Death Note. This is one that I feel like I've been recommended this book time and time again, even before I was getting into manga. And ever since getting into manga, I feel like the recommendations for this book have just gone up and skyrocketed because everybody's like, if you're reading manga and you haven't read Death Note, like what are you even doing? And this was especially inspired by this person, Jay Lee, who commented on my YouTube post. They said, since you're getting into manga these days, I'd recommend Death Note, a thriller manga. It's about a student who finds a notebook and when he writes someone's name on it, they die. It's a great cat and mouse dynamic and raises ethical questions. And you know, once again too, whenever I've asked people for manga recommendations, this book just comes up time and time again. And so I felt like this would be the perfect opportunity to finally read Death Note, you know, to see what all the hype is about. I'm honestly very excited and very nervous to start this because I feel like if I get obsessed with it, I'm just gonna wanna spiral and like read the entire manga series. So, you know, that's how these things go. But I figured because now that I'm starting to get into manga, it would be perfect to include manga in this type of video series now. And so yeah, these are the five books that I'm going to be reading for this video. I'm very excited to get into these and I think I'm going to be starting with Pretty as a Picture. So let's get to it, shall we? Okay, hello. So I have started on the first book that I'm planning to read for this video, which is Pretty as a Picture. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of wanted to start with this one, not only because I did get the audiobook from my library, so it just seemed like the appropriate time to start with this one, but also because for some reason I had it in my head that this would be the one I would enjoy the least, to be honest. And I think that's mainly because of the Goodreads average rating. I know I keep saying this, that like I should stop looking at Goodreads before I pick up books because right now on Goodreads, this book is averaging like a 3.5. Like it's kind of on the lower end. And to be honest, I probably would not have picked this up myself just because of that lower rating. But I did have a few friends that rated this, you know, pretty highly. And so that kind of gave me hope. And to be honest, this book is actually a little bit more interesting than I was anticipating. Like, it's reminding me so much of the book Run On that I just read last month by um, Catherine Ryan Howard. Like, that one, it's really reminding me a lot. Like, it's very similar in vibes and, like, with plot points and, like, what's happening. And something that I'm really enjoying about this book is the fact that we're following this woman who works as a film editor, you know? I just think her job is really cool. I like kind of being in her head because she looks at everything almost like it's a movie or, like, how would she edit that? And, you know, as someone who does a fair share of editing myself, for YouTube. Um, I've always been really fasc fascinated by film editing and like that kind of a job. I actually almost went to the Art Institute because I was going to major in film editing and I took like a bunch of film editing classes my senior year of high school. So it's definitely a huge passion of mine. You know, film editing is something I think is really cool. And so I just love how much she talks about her job and how much she thinks about different shots and like what she would do in that situation and how, oh my God, like there's too many actors talking in dialogue and that's gonna be such a pain in the ass to edit. And I don't know, in some ways, I can see how some people might find this to be very boring, especially if you like don't give a shit about films or film editing and all that. But me personally, as a huge film lover and editor, um, I just really appreciate all the dialogue about it. I also appreciate she's having a lot of conversations about women in the film industry and how they're expected to behave and act a certain way which you know again really reminds me of that book run on that i just read last month i feel like so far for me though this book isn't quite as interesting as run on just because with the book run on there was a bit more mystery and intrigue in the story whereas with this one i feel like this one it takes a long time before you start to get that intrigue i mean because i am currently 
um, 234 pages into this book. I've literally just been listening to it all day. And I wanted to update you sooner, but to be honest, I was just listening to it. It was flying by. It's a very easy read, an easy book for me to get into because she just jumps right into like the film conversations. And so I loved that. And I also love some of her like snarky jokes, like how she'll just throw in some like movie comments that you would only really know if you're like a film lover. Like she talks about Donnie Darko and how it doesn't make any fucking sense and like, you know, different things like that that I actually really appreciate as a film person. However, I think where this book is slacking for me is with the mystery or at least like that aspect of the book just isn't as interesting because, you know, it's this whole story is about how she's going to this film set to work with this uh, legendary and demanding director called Tony Rees. Then some girl dies or there's like some kind of mystery around this girl and like what happened with her. There's also these different transcripts that are included throughout the book that it's unclear to me if this is intended to be like a podcast that we're supposed to be reading but it just says like dead ringer is produced for the ear and designed to be heard not read we strongly encourage you to listen to the audio so i think it's like an interview maybe like transcripts of an interview or a podcast or something of that nature so that's kind of also happening in between the chapters but very similarly to you know the book run on we have a situation where she doesn't really know what's happening on set she doesn't know what's real and what's fake he's wondering why you know it seems like half of the crew like really wants to quit and the other half is getting fired and there just seems to be a lot of like secrets happening on the movie set and i'm just like starting to realize that i really love that trope you know like i'm i really do love thriller or horror books that take place on a movie like film set i just think it makes it so much more interesting and fun so i don't know i'm you know pretty surprised reading this one right now i think right now if i had to rate it it would probably be around a four maybe like a 3.5 it's interesting it's just not quite as interesting as run on for me right now i just have to compare it to that just because they feel so similar and now um we are going to get some dinner started my dad's making some Mexican rice tonight and we're making these little tacos and like guacamole and all kinds of stuff I'm so excited because I'm so hungry and it's so freaking hot out today the next afternoon it's just about one o'clock right now and i wanted to update because i just finished reading pretty as a picture and i will say that the ending of this book just didn't really do much for me i think i um wanted a bit more from this ending and you know like the last line of this book while i do respect it because i think it's kind of ironic um, I also just feel like it wasn't that satisfying for me. Like, I feel like I just needed a little bit more from that ending and a little bit more conclusions for, the, like, things that were happening. Like, there was a few just loose ends that I wanted tied up. But at the end of the day, you know, I did enjoy this book a lot more than I thought I would. I feel like I'm gonna end up probably rating this around, like, a 3 out of 5 because I don't think it's nearly as fun as runtime. And to be honest, they're kind of so similar to the point where I would really only recommend reading one or the other. Like, I don't think you need to read both stories because they are incredibly similar, actually, in so many ways. So if you are looking for something kind of like this, then I would recommend Runtime over this. I mean, the major, the biggest difference with these two stories is that in Runtime, we're basically following the lead actress on the movie set, whereas in this one, we're following the film editor. So it is kind of like a different job that's on the film set, but I almost think it's even more kind of like intense to read from the point of view of the lead actress because like there are some things that happen to her because she's the lead actress in runtime whereas in this book not that her character doesn't feel as involved with like the production of the movie but it's just a different point of view but it's hard to say because i don't know i enjoyed the point of view from a film editor in this book a little bit more than I enjoyed the point of view of the lead actress, but I like the overall plot and atmosphere better in runtime. But again, it's just wild that I've read these two books that are so similar to each other, like almost back to back, like that is so strange. Good morning. It has been a couple of days since I've last updated this vlog, but I wanted to update you because yesterday I started on The Perfect Child and I only got 45 pages into this, but I just kind of wanted to, you know, get a jump on it and get a feel for it. 
because this is a book that I've just heard about so much over the years and I've been really curious about it. And basically we're following this couple named Christopher and Hannah and Christopher is a surgeon and Hannah is like a nurse and they both work at the same hospital. And one day there's this case where they have this really young looking child come in and the child literally like looks like a toddler who has been so malnourished and is like so small and tiny and she's like covered in blood and dirt and it's just this really weird case where they find this young child she's like walking around a parking lot or something alone and the police bring her in they're trying to find like who her parents could be like they don't know anything about her then shortly after she's in the hospital they realize that she's not actually a toddler she's actually six years old and she has pretty decent like verbal communication skills and all of this stuff and she gets an immediate attachment to this guy Christopher and this is a couple Christopher and Hannah where they've actually been struggling with infertility for years and it seems like there's this immediate bond at least for Christopher with this young girl but it seems like it's gonna be a situation where Christopher is gonna really bond with this girl and then Hannah is really going to not bond with this girl and so that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting so far and I don't know like I'm only 45 pages in obviously so I don't really know where this is going or what's gonna happen but I'm thinking it's one of those situations because everybody compares this book to like the push and so it seems like it's gonna be one of those books where the mother is feeling very like isolated from you know the rest of the family and she doesn't feel like the daughter is gonna be you know her child like I'm just getting like that's where this book is going and I'm excited to read it I don't know like I do think the writing like the writing is just fine for me so far it's honestly kind of like a really simplistic kind of basic writing style so I'm not obsessed with the way it's written but I'm also kind of like here for the plot you know I'm kind of I'm already invested a little bit I want to see where this is going I've heard that this book just gets more and more ridiculous as it goes this morning I am getting ready to do the live show for things we do in the dark with my friend Elizabeth and then after that live show wraps up, I'm going to be doing some Patreon reading sprints so that I can hopefully finish The Perfect Child today. Like, that is the goal. I know this book is kind of thick, but hopefully I'll be able to be on sprints for a couple of hours and finish this one. But for now, I'm going to go to my local coffee place just to get a breakfast sandwich because, <laughs> yes. now 140 pages into The Perfect Child and so far I feel like this is one of those books where I feel like I've read other books similar to this because I feel like you know this isn't a new situation that I've heard of where these parents are trying to learn how to adapt to this child and the child just absolutely hates the mom for no apparent reason and just kind of like lashes out at her and makes her feel uncomfortable like it's nothing new I guess that I haven't read in a thriller before but for some reason I'm particularly invested in this family Family. Like I'm just really curious to see where it goes because I just hear from so many people that the ending of this book just gets absolutely wild and the things that I just read at the end of chapter 22 I was like Jesus Christ like damn, you know, so like things are definitely starting to happen I think so far for me at least you know like 140 pages in it doesn't really feel like much of a thriller right now Like it just kind of feels like this like intense drama with this family trying to navigate this like new lifestyle but I can definitely feel that it's like starting to get to the point where it could start to really feel like a thriller. So I don't know, at this point in time, I am still enjoying it. I don't know if this has like the potential to be a new favorite of mine, but I'm still enjoying it. I'm still like flipping the pages. I'm getting through it without an audiobook. So that says something right there. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I'm on my third sprint right now on Patreon. So I'm just gonna keep chugging on, you know, we're just gonna keep going.
like 4 15 in the afternoon and i just wrapped up my patreon reading sprints i got all the way up to page 280 while i was on the sprints and this book is just absolutely wild you know like this book is getting darker and darker as the story progresses and it's really starting to feel like things are kicking into gear like there were some things that have happened with this child that literally made me like Ugh. like i didn't even want to read it i was like starting to skim some words because it was so nasty and unimaginable and just like what the fuck dude this is one of those books that's contributing to my fear of like ever wanting to have children like that is you know children are terrifying and this book in some ways you know it does remind me quite a bit of the push just because of the plot and like what certain things are happening that are similar in the story but i feel like this is almost the more like <laughs> Because I feel like the push, you know, at least with comparing it to this, the push feels a little bit more like subtle with its like creepy things with the kid. Whereas this feels a lot more like in your face. Like this little girl does not give a fuck about making you feel uncomfortable or scared or whatever. And it's just, you know, kind of horrifying. And, you know, we were talking about this on my Patreon reading sprints, but we were talking about how this book really provokes this discussion about whether or not a child can be born evil or whether that's, you know, something that they learn based off of how they were raised or like their, you know, or whether societal things affect whether or not someone will grow up to be evil or if that's something you can just be born with. Like, is that a certain thing in your brain that you're just born with this like evil tendency in nature? Interesting conversation topic. And I feel like this book is kind of pushing that idea of like, is there anything they could have done to prevent her from being this way? Or like, is it her, you know, life circumstances and her situation? Cause like this, Little girl did not have an easy life even before she met this family. Gosh, this is just getting so intense and I only have this little sliver of the book left. So I think I'm definitely going to try to finish this tonight. Taking a break right now just because, you know, I want to take a quick shower and just change and relax. And then I think later tonight we're going to make some mac and cheese, like our staple, our go-to. And then hopefully after that I can finish this one because I'm just so intrigued and I'm so excited because it's been a while since I've been able to fly through through a book like this without the help of the audiobook. You know, I feel like lately the audiobook helps me focus a lot and so I think it's saying a lot about how entertaining this book is that I'm able to read it as quickly as I am. But it feels good, you know? It's been a while since I've just been able to like sit and read a book all day without the help of the audiobook. It's a nice feeling. to update you because it's a little bit later in the night and I have finished reading The Perfect Child and this book was a freaking roller coaster like what the heck like the end of this book I was just like like there was a moment at the end of this book where my jaw was just like hanging open in shock because I couldn't believe something that happened towards the end of this book. Oh, I'm so torn on what I want to rate this, you know, because I think my gut is telling me that I should give this a 4.5 out of 5 because it wasn't a perfect five-star book for me for a few different reasons. But at the same time, I had so much fun reading this book and like I've read it all so quickly and I couldn't put it down and it was so entertaining that it doesn't feel right to only give it four stars. Like it's definitely a four and a half like 4.5 rating for me and this book was just so wild you know i really do think um if you enjoyed the push or something of that nature i really do think you could enjoy this i would almost want to market this as the more like mainstream blockbuster thriller version of the push because i do think the push is a little bit more you know beautifully written it's a little bit more subtle with its like creepiness and terror whereas this book is a little bit more straight in your face and i think if you were disappointed by the push for whatever reason I do think this one might be worth checking out if you're interested in something with a similar concept. This was just a wild ride. <laughs> like, I know I keep saying that, but like, oh my god. 
This one just made me absolutely terrified at the idea of ever having children and I'm not gonna lie like the very very end of this book was a little bit underwhelming which I think is why I didn't want to give it the solid like five stars because the ending was just okay like that last chapter it was fine but the things leading up to the ending were just absolutely shocking and I was just like what the fuck am I reading right now? I also kind of love the way that this story is told because if you don't know we do get three points of views in this book so we get not only the dad Christopher who's the surgeon we get his wife Hannah who's the nurse then we also get the point of view of this woman named Piper who you know she works as like a child protective services person and she's being interviewed after the events of like what went down so it's kind of cool to get her point of view because you know as the police are interviewing her they're like how could you not see this coming and like you know they're kind of like foreshadowing and leading up like letting you know that shit's about to go down and so I really liked that aspect of the book too because it really kept the pages flipping you know because I would be like ooh, I would get so intrigued because her chapters are kind of hinting at what's to come and I just loved that writing style and I loved ugh, this book was just so horrifying and like some of the things that this child did were just absolutely absurd and it was so good so I'm so glad that I finally read this book because of y'all like y'all weren't kidding this was insane It's been a couple of hours. I took a quick shower to like wash my hair and I changed, but I still feel gross. But I have been reading quite a bit of The Housemaid. I am now about 116 pages in. This book is absolutely flying. Like that is like the biggest compliment I can give it so far is that it is very fast paced. There are very short chapters. I mean, this book is super easy to read, you know, as I just said, and I feel like that's a good thing and kind of like a meh thing because I feel like while it's really easy to read, it's also very kind of like like basic simplistic writing if you will like this writing isn't anything phenomenal it almost kind of reminds me of like Kirsten Modglin's kind of style of writing like it's giving me those vibes but I don't mind it so far just because honestly like this is the kind of writing that my brain needs today you know we're just following this woman who gets hired to be their housemaid obviously and she's gonna be working for this woman named Nina and then she also has a husband Andrew and they have a daughter and this woman Nina is turning out to be kind of a pain in the ass to work for her but our main character like she kind of doesn't really have a choice because she's kind of dealing with you know recent homelessness and she's had so many obstacles against her that she is desperate for this job like really really desperate and I think that Nina knows that and she kind of takes advantage of the situation but Nina is also just like so difficult to work for because Nina will be like telling her to do one thing and then she'll be like I never told you to do that and constantly like changing what she said to her which I can imagine would be very frustrating like I'm getting so frustrated on behalf of the main character definitely one of those like eat the rich kind of vibes books you know because Nina doesn't have a job like she's just super rich because of her husband who's rich they have this child together and she doesn't really do anything all day because they have like a landscaper they have the gardener they have you know all these people that work for them and it's crazy because her our protagonist where she's staying in the house is in this tiny little attic space that's basically like the size of a closet like it's really small and it only has one window that like doesn't even open and the window is really small and the whole situation seems kind of strange and then to make it even stranger she discovered like right at the beginning of this book she's like oh why is there a lock on the outside of the door like the door only locks from the outside so like somebody could potentially lock her in the room while she's sleeping there I don't know there's a ton of really weird things like that and so it's kind of like what the heck and now she's starting to learn a little bit more about Nina's past which might explain some things about why she is the way she is I mean like I said it's really easy to get into I'm actually really enjoying it so far just because I'm finding it really fast-paced and really interesting we're gonna be making some dinner right now I think we're gonna be making some beef quesadillas and then after that hopefully I'll get the opportunity to read some more of this and get some done tonight because I'm really enjoying it <laughs> Rice, quesadillas, Sprite. <laughs> what more do you need, huh? Look who's also having Sprite. Whoa. Oh, I, could, I could use a Coke. <laughs> I've converted her. No, I just <laughs> don't have any more. Yeah, she's just out of Coke, but you know, Sprite is superior anyways. So 
I'm in the line at Dairy Queen right now because I'm picking up some blizzards for us, but I wanted to update you that I'm almost 200 pages into The Housemaid, and I've noticed that I'm a few pages away from part two, and I'm still so invested, really enjoying it. Like, I don't know, it's kind of... I know it's kind of like cliche in a way because I could definitely predict like where this story's been going so far, but I'm excited to see where it's gonna go. So it's much later in the night, but I just finished reading The Housemaid. I flew through this entire book within like a few hours, you know? Like I started this book at 2.30 in the afternoon and I have barely taken a minute. Like I only took breaks to eat and to like go and do things and I just read it so freaking fast. So I feel like that's a good sign to me. I almost wish that I had updated this vlog a little bit more throughout my experience reading the second half of this book, you know, because the last time I updated you is when I was approaching part two and I was saying how I feel like there was like a twist that was about to drop, like I was about to get to the reveal. And as soon as it hit part two, I was like, no, because I had a feeling it was going in that direction. And I am not a huge fan of this kind of plot twist. I feel like I've talked about this time and time again where I'm like, that is not a plot twist. I hate that so much in books. And it's one of my least favorite things because I just think it's so freaking obvious. And so around part two of this book, I was feeling very like, oh no, like this is not gonna be for me. And like, I can see why other people might enjoy this book, but I'm just not feeling it after part two, you know? But then as we get closer to the end of the book, there was also a part three. And um, the things that were happening in part three, even though they were like a little bit predictable, I was still kind of like, I don't know, I was still invested. I was still having a fun time reading this one. I mean, I feel like this one as predictable as it may be, at least like with where the story's going, there is some really unhinged, like crazy shit that happens in this book that's a little bit more, I don't know, like darker than the average thriller that I read, I guess, or at least it went places that I was like, whoa, like that's something I haven't seen before, okay. <laughs> and so I liked those aspects of the book and then the ending, you know, I do have some issues with the ending of this book or at least how some things got resolved at the end. It felt very convenient, like a lot of the things that were happening, but then the very last, like the very slim last, I think it was like the epilogue, oof. I loved the epilogue. Like the epilogue is so clever. I literally got chills all over my body as I was reading that epilogue. Like solid freaking applause for this author for that epilogue. So now I'm like torn over how I feel about this book, you know, because I feel like it was quite a roller coaster to read this. And I do think if you are the kind of person who has read a ton of thrillers, then I don't think this is going to be something that really shocks you in any way. Or, you know, I don't think this is the most unpredictable predictable thriller that I've ever read and I wouldn't necessarily call the twist a jaw-dropping twist because I think the twist is pretty standard stuff if I'm being honest when it comes to reading thrillers but at the same time I found this book to be so goddamn entertaining that I could not put it down all day and like there were still some unhinged ridiculous things that happened in this book that I was just like okay like what and then that freaking epilogue like the epilogue was so good and so, I don't know, I feel like I have to give this four stars. I'm also knocking off a star just because I don't think that writing is like super good. I feel like it is really comparable to like Kirsten Modglin where it's just, it, the writing feels very simplistic. Like there's not a lot of depth to like these characters or like the story or the writing in general. But otherwise, um, I feel like I still need to give this four stars just because of how much fun I had reading this. It was very entertaining. It kept me invested. I love that there were short chapters. I feel like I just flew through this book and it held my attention the whole time and I felt like the ending was actually Really, really clever and so I've got to give it credit you know where credit is due. Hello it is the next morning it's not morning it's afternoon I don't know why I said that and I just got home from the gym which is why I look a little <laughs> flushed. I also um, just cut up a whole apple and I have some peanut butter over there because I'm gonna eat some apples with peanut butter but while I'm eating I thought I would start Death Note volume 1 because this is the only thriller manga that was recommended to me and it just feels right to include manga in this video at this point because I'm just getting so into manga recently. I'm going to start this while eating my apple and then I'm probably also going to, once I'm done eating, I'm probably going to take a shower and change because I feel really gross. 
and hopefully get this volume done today. I'm so excited to finally read Death Note. I've just heard so many good things over the years. I feel like this is the one manga that I've heard about constantly, even before I got into manga. So I have some pretty, you know, high expectations for this. I hope I love it. much later in the night but I wanted to let you know that I finished volume one of Death Note. Um, this collection actually has volumes one and two in it which is pretty cool because I'm going to immediately read volume two because I am fucking obsessed and I don't know why it took me so long to read this book. All I knew about it personally before reading it is that we would follow this teenager where he comes across this notebook called the Death Note where he can write in the name of somebody and then they die and like that's all I really new but I feel like this story is so much more complex and interesting than I was anticipating. There's all these different kinds of rules of like how he's able to do it but then I also think this teenager that we're following his name is Light by the way which I just think is such a cool unique name um, but I think the way that he's going about doing this is really cool and actually really smart like I feel like he's trying to change the world for the better in a way and I just think it's really interesting it's almost like Dexter where, where he's like doing something that's awful but he's also using it in a way that might benefit the world <laughs> But then also, um, there's this character named L, and they're kind of this, like, anonymous, you know, like, we don't know who they are, they're just kind of this, like, detective type of character, and it's this iconic L symbol here, which I feel like I've seen that everywhere. Like, I never really knew where this symbol was from, but I've seen, like, even some of my favorite creators, like, um, GB, like, who does the ASMR, I know she has a tattoo of this, and I've always thought, like, that is such a beautiful like thing and I've never, I, I didn't know what it was from. This character that just goes by this symbol L is like a super, super undercover kind of like private investigator detective type of person. And it's really fascinating because this person L is trying to figure out like who could be causing all of these crazy deaths that are happening. I like when there's like cat and mouse kind of like when two different things are trying to catch each other doing something when they're both equally as smart. Like, I don't know how else to explain this, but like, I think the teenage boy, the way he's going about using the Death Note is so freaking smart and so freaking clever. And I just love his ideas and like the way he goes about things. I just find it to be very interesting. But then I also think Elle is like equally smart in their attempts to try and catch him and catch him doing what he's doing. And it's, it's just fascinating. It's just so fascinating. Fascinating. I also think this uh, character is just very unique and I like that our main character, he's like the only one that can see him, which I also think is really funny. It adds that like element of like every nobody else can see this guy, but it's just really funny because our main character is the only one who's able to see him. And I don't know, there's just so much about this that I love. Like I could literally gush about this all night long. I have so many freaking tabs. Like I use these cool gray tabs in here because of the black sprayed edges, so I thought it would look really cool. So you can't really see how many there are, but there are so many tabs. And so yeah, I think I'm just gonna be laying here for the rest of the night and reading volume two immediately because I genuinely just love this so much. Like I can see myself binging this whole series immediately and I'm so happy about it because I wasn't sure if I was gonna love it as much as everyone says that I will but like ugh. Ooh, like that first volume was definitely five stars and I was telling my sister and my mom like the plot of this book all night and they were both like oh my god that's incredible and I was like I know so yeah hella excited that I'm obsessed with another manga series oh my god also tonight I finally downloaded the new iOS update and I'm obsessed with my lock screen like I love that you can like change the colors 
of the numbers and you can change like the font style of the numbers and like ugh. there's so many updates that i love with this new ios like i love too that when you go into your photos and if you want to like you know like mask a certain photo of like whatever you have you literally just press down on the subject you literally just press down on whatever your it is that you're trying to mask and then you can mask it like right out of the photo like do you know how much time that would save me with editing <laughs> like thumbnail photos? I just think that's genius and there's so many cool things. You can mark text messages as unread like it's an email. Oh my god! And you can also unsend a message like if you accidentally send a message to the wrong person you can unsend it within like 15 seconds or something that you sent it. Like this shit is changing the game. I'm so excited like amazing. <laughs> Hello, hello. It's a little bit later in the afternoon. It's about 3.30 and I'm now 130 pages into Look Closer. This book has been really wild so far and like really unexpected, you know, because I went into this book knowing absolutely nothing. Like I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but I really like it so far because we're following this character named Simon and he has this wife named Vicky and oh my gosh, dude, this guy Simon is literally Joe Goldberg. Like he's so Joe Goldberg vibes. Like everything about his uh, point of view, cause like we're really like inside of this guy's head when we're reading this book and it's so similar to you. So like I'm kind of obsessed already. Something that's really interesting is right at the beginning of this book, Simon is walking into a house and he sees this woman named Lauren like hanging, like she had killed herself or something or maybe he was involved like we don't really know but she's dead and then he's like oh shoot he leaves behind this note that's like I'm sorry Lauren I'm sorry for what I did and I'm sorry you didn't love me but I'm not sorry for loving you like nobody else could I'm coming to you now I hope you'll accept me and let me love you in a way you wouldn't in this world what the fuck does that mean and that was like the very first chapter and then it jumps back a few months and we kind of see how this woman named Lauren was like a woman that was in his past and he had known her like 19 years ago, I guess. And then it's about how he's starting to get to know her again in the present day. He seems like he's really obsessed with this woman named Lauren, even though he's married to this woman named Vicky. But it's also interesting because we not only get, you know, Simon's point of view, we also do get Vicky's point of view, like his wife. And she's kind of up to her own shit, which I'm also kind of like, okay, Vicky, what the heck? So I'm very intrigued because I like jumping back and forth between their points of views because, you know, yeah, he is kind of a creepy Joe Goldberg type so like I like reading from his point of view but then his wife is also kind of like a little shady and she's like up to her own shit too so I don't know I like reading from two characters who are both like a little bit fucked up I'm just really curious to see where this is going because I feel like th this story is a lot more complex than I was expecting like you know especially at the start I was like okay this is just gonna be like the next you like another Joe Goldberg but I feel like it's a lot deeper than that or like there's a lot more going on than just that and I feel like it would be way too obvious if he had anything to do with how Lauren died so I feel like there's gonna be more to the story there but yeah I'm really enjoying this one so far I'm finding it to be very like fast paced because I was kind of worried about how long this one is you know because it's all it's almost like 450 pages so it's kind of a thick one for a thriller but I'm really enjoying it like those first 130 pages just flew by and I'm invested okay so I'm now about almost 250 pages into this book and it just continues to be very wild I feel like this is one of those stories where it's not going to be the most like crazy ass plot twist like unpredictable shit maybe but i think it's really good at just kind of having these small little like twists and turns along the way i feel like i'm just really invested in like the situation that's happening right now and i'm honestly kind of surprised that i'm enjoying it as much as i am because i feel like usually when thrillers start to go down this path that i'm starting to see is like where we're heading usually it's like not my favorite thing to read about in thrillers but for some reason with these characters in particular i'm just very invested and i want to see what's going on i'm starting to get a clearer picture now of what might have actually happened to lauren and while i don't think it's the most like unpredictable thing to have happened i think it's a lot more interesting <laughs> 
And I don't know, I'm still really enjoying it. I'm flying through this book. But right now we're just gonna make some dinner real quick. Um, probably going to be making the HelloFresh dinner that you saw me make in the intro of this video. I just think it's so funny that one part is like, Hello, what's up? It's the next afternoon now and it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. Today I had kind of an intense day because it was my consultation with my oral surgeon because I'm gonna have to get my wisdom teeth removed because they're causing some issues. The news was just kind of intense because, you know, they found more wisdom teeth than I was expecting and they're gonna have to remove four teeth in total. And, you know, we scheduled the surgery. I had all of the talks and it was just very overwhelming and I cried a lot because I hate the dentist and I'm very scared. So naturally, you know, after that, kind of traumatic morning um me and my sister went to home goods and we just got some things to like lift my spirits like this really cute cozy ghost pillow i swear i don't usually get decorative pillows because i find them to be really like scratchy and uncomfortable but this is literally one of the softest pillows i've ever felt in my life like i could probably sleep on this pillow and i would be happy so i had to get it because isn't it so freaking cute and they're on both sides like wow amazing and then i also finally got this shirt in the mail this is a shirt that's like designed by my sister it says cute but dead inside and i'm just kind of obsessed with it like it could not have come at a better time because i needed it today but i do feel slightly better about things now that i know a little bit more of like what to expect with the surgery and now that we have the date planned and everything it feels like i'm back in control of things because a lot of things were just up in the air for a long time and that really scares me sorry there's children outside of my window but anyways i wanted to let you know that last night i did get all the way up to page 325 in look closer i now only have a little bit more than 100 pages left this book is wild dude there was one twist that i did not see coming and while i don't think this is a thriller that's like super heavy on the plot twist necessarily it's one of those thrillers where this author is just so smart in the way he like misdirects you like you think you know what's going on and then he's like nope he just like pulls the rug out from under you and you're like oh wait like it's like the assumptions that you make about these characters and all of these people is wrong at any given time and i think it's really fascinating and really well written i could definitely see why this one got recommended to me so much because wow it's just really good writing i've still been tabbing it with these um kind of like light blue tabs anytime that something kind of like interesting or like twisty in the plot happens but then i had to add this dark blue tab because that was like a big twist that i didn't see coming and i was like holy shit it was very exciting and so you know i'm getting near the end i'm curious to see where it's gonna go i'm having a fun time with it like i think this was a great book to end this video with because i feel in my heart this is either gonna be a four or five star depending on how the rest of this book goes i love ending things on a positive note you know let's hope the ending doesn't ruin it all <laughs> It's a little bit later in the night. It's just after eight o'clock and I've just been sitting here reading a look closer and I just finished it. I feel like this is one of those books where the author is constantly just misdirecting you. Like that's the best way I could describe this book is that it's full of misdirection. Like you think you know something about a certain character and then it just completely flips. And once again, there was another twist towards the end that I was like, wait a second, what? And then it's like one of those twists where it almost makes you want to reread the book because it changes like everything you think you know about every single character. So fascinating. Like I thought this was so good. My only critique with this book really is that I do think that it's kind of like long-winded at times like I don't think there's ever usually a reason why a thriller needs to be over 400 pages like I just really don't and with this one being 450 pages like towards the end I was just like okay like I'm ready for this story to end now you know like I just don't think there's usually any reason for a thriller to be this long but at the same time I just had such a fun time with this book I feel like I have to give this one four stars. Like, I don't think it's a new favorite, but I could definitely see why this is like really hyped right now and why a lot of people are recommending it because it's just a nonstop wild ride full of twists and turns. And it was so surprising. I love that it's called Look Closer too, because I feel like that's such a, you know, nod to this story and how like, if you really look closer, nothing is as it seems and i love that about it the last two paragraphs of this book were so random it's almost like this author just didn't really know like how to end it 
um, but still I did think those last few chapters were pretty surprising. Hey, hello! That is a wrap on this thriller reading vlog. I'm so excited because I feel like this vlog went so incredibly well. Like, I didn't dislike any of the books that I read in this video. I mean, the lowest rating that I had in this video was a three star and I still thoroughly enjoyed myself reading this book. So I think that that's pretty incredible. I had four books that I gave either four or five stars to. I feel like my favorite book that I read for this video was actually Death Note. I did end up reading the second volume because like there is two volumes in this collection as I mentioned and I read that second volume and I thought it was so freaking good. I gave this volume as a whole five stars because I'm obsessed with it and I can't wait to read more books from this series and I think this is definitely worth the hype. Like I get it now. I love this concept. Concept. I think it's so smart and so cool. And then out of the books that I read this week, I really enjoyed all of these. I feel like my favorite has got to be The Perfect Child. Like this is the one that has stayed on my mind for quite a long time and it was just so much fun and it was chaos and it was just like what the fuck. But both of these were also just really surprising as well in their own ways. I mean as I said I had a really great time during this reading vlog and I enjoyed everything that I read which rarely ever happens for me these days so that just goes to show why I should definitely be trusting your thriller recommendations and listening to you when you tell me to pick up books because you all know. So yeah thank you so much for watching this vlog. If you've read any of these five books then please let me know your thoughts on them or if you're wanting to pick up any of these five books now then also please please let me know that. Thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye!